And our first guest, it seems only appropriate to get the tournament director of the ASB Classic and to start the show, Nicholas Lamprin. Congratulations on the new gig and welcome into the studio. Thank you and good morning, everyone. Yeah, how how is it? How is being in the in the hot seat as the tournament director of of this tournament now? Um, it's pretty big role, you know, especially after um, you know the the tournament being off the calendar for the last two years. Mm. Um, there's a lot of expectations from. I guess the fans, the media, and all the, the stakeholders um, to deliver a top-notch event, um, and so that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, I mean, when did you actually take the seat, and how much has COVID disrupted what you were trying to do? Um, I took over at the end of May, start of early June. Mm. Um, it was on and off the first few months because I, I wasn't in the country, so I had to work re- remotely. Um, we haven't really had any issue with, with, with COVID this year because basically the, the decision to restart the, the tournament was taken once we had the guarantee that the borders would reopen. So it was fine for this year, but the fact that the tournament's been cancelled the last two years actually has uh, created a lot of challenge on the organisation. Yeah, and, and what about, you know, I mean, I, I used to talk to Cal Budge regularly, your predecessor, and there was a lot of, you know, relationship building with players and with their managers and, and, and coaches and things. and. Uh, did, did that make it more difficult to attract people because of the uncertainty? Um, I think it's fine now, but there, there was obviously a lot of questions about, you know, players and, and, and managers about, you know, the, the conditions of entry in New Zealand, and, and we'll still get a few. Um, there's always some concern about, you know, especially the weeks before Grand Slam, moving from one country to another. Um, you know, players want to make sure they're not, they're not going to be stuck. Um, and and the fact that all these rules have, have relaxed now actually play, played in our favour. Um, so I guess yeah, players are now pretty happy to come and 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 feeling um, secure about the fact that they're going to be able to go to Australia and play the tournament. Yeah. Now I mean it's a WTA and ATP event, obviously the ASP Classic. Does that give you? A little bit more scope in terms of that you're talking to both male and female players and agents and things than say a tournament that would be just one or the other um not really i think it it's just important for us to have this, these two tournaments back to back um they're they're, they're in, the, in the place in the calendar which is very important in the in the lead up to the australian open um all the players come off uh from you know from the off season they've been training really really hard and they're after matches. So this is a time of the year when you want to test your match fitness uh, because a week later you'll be playing in Melbourne be- best of five for, for, for the guys. So this is a, a crucial time of the year for them. Yeah. In terms of who you're competing against for players, uh, I know Brisbane, Sydney, uh, Adelaide, are those, the, are those the three that you have to worry about? So it's sl- slightly different this year. Um, there's been uh, the creation of a new competition called the United Cup, uh, which takes over from the, the uh, ATP Cup. So now it's pretty much the same format, but it's a mixed team event, so men and, and, and women. Um, and at the same time, uh, Brisbane moved to Adelaide. Um, they have a 500 that week. So we, we're competing against, against this tournament. So um, we were, we're lucky to be early in the market because you know Tennis Australia was still trying to figure out what, what the best calendar was, was going to be for them next year. Um, and I guess we, we managed to pick the, the players that we wanted. Yeah, which is fantastic. I mean, looking at the the women's draw, I mean, Emma Raducanu, Coco Goff, I mean, you've, you've got two of the, of, of the biggest up and coming players in the women's game. Yeah, I think that's you know, something that we, we want to make sure uh, that we could bring to the, 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 the fans in, in New Zealand. You know, they've, they've been starved of tennis for, for the last two years. Uh, 2020 was the year when, when Serena was there. So um, there was uh, a strong expectation uh, from us to, to deliver on the player field. And I, I believe this is what we've done. And there's a couple of uh, teenage sisters you've got coming out uh, who are from the Czech Republic as well. The... Uh, Fruvratova sisters, have I got that right? Yes, I, ju- I just call them Linda and Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a lot easier that way. Uh, no, it's um, you know it's the kind of story that we want to uh, tell the the public and and, and create along the way. Um, the, these two sisters are really special. They've been in the radar of you know the likes of Nike or the agencies like IMG for like five or six years already. Um, one seventeen, the other one's uh, fifteen. The 17 uh, year old won a first title this year, um, WTA 250 in Chennai. 
uh, and the younger one went on to uh, winning five ITF tournaments in a row. So that's 25 match wins wow. in a row, which is very, very special. Yeah. Um, so I have a very good relationship with our agent. Um, we had discussions about, you know, bringing them to Auckland. And we also believe it was the right time for Brenda, who's the younger one, to get a, a taste of what, what it is to play on, on, on the tour. Um, so we are really happy to to give a, a, a wild card for the for the tournament. Yeah, are they going to play doubles together as well as play singles? I'm not sure at this stage. Okay, no. okay, it's a, it's one to keep an eye on because that was something um, you know that I think the Asby Classic has in the past has been famous for. It's spotting that talent before they blow up and, and having them here, right? Yes, um, and, and, and you know also you know when when you're competing with bigger events the the, the same week you need to be smart or creative about the way you you build your, your your player field so there's always going to be some very strong competitions for the maybe let's say the top five girls in the world but there's a lot of talent out there so this is our job to go and find it um and make sure we can attract them and and build a relationship over the years so they like to come back up you know, we've had a text come through from Maggie, um, and she's just said, uh, can Nicholas tell us who has the broadcast rights for the ASB Classic? Yes, so the tournament will be live uh, every day on Sky Sport. Sky Sport uh, will for, have it. For the two weeks, yes. Yeah, there you go, Maggie. So I hope that answers a question for you. Uh, I've got two weeks of it, of course. Uh, in, in terms of on the men's side of things, um, the wild card makeup is slightly different this time in, in the past there would be a wild card given to an up-and-coming new zealand or a top new zealand player that's maybe just outside of qualifying but it's going to be done slightly differently this time around yeah we change the, the system a little bit um again we, we we're still trying to reward new zealand players and we want to give them the opportunity to play at the sb classic um, the way we work this year is we're organizing a playoff uh, so during the uh, the week before the ASB Classic, there will be uh, a tournament played at uh, Scarborough Tennis Centre with all the top uh, Kiwi players. Uh, the winner will be awarded a Mendro wildcard and the runner-up a Qualies wildcard. It doesn't mean that the other wildcards won't go to Kiwi players, mm -hmm. but we're trying to encourage the Kiwi players to go that route uh, because this is probably the, the, the safest way for them to to play the ASB Classic. Yeah, and those games, are they going to be broadcast at all? Is, is, is um, that plan? Going no, to? not at this stage. Not at this no, stage? Oh, no. Okay, all right. Well, look, look forward to that. In terms of who we've got coming from uh, a, a men's point of view, uh, who excites you the most that we're going to see here um, at Stanley Street? Well, there's there's a lot of stories uh, behind behind the players that are coming. Um, just, just to give you one, you know, we... Um, I've had the first set of discussion with with uh, Casper Ruud at the French Open. Yeah. Um, it, in my mind, it was always going to be you know top ten, but probably eight, nine, or ten, just just top ten. Um, and then he's had an unbelievable year. You know, played final French Open, final U.S. Open, and final at the uh, ATP Masters. Um, he was ranked as high as number two after the U.S. Open. He's still number three now. So to be able to bring a, a, a play of that caliber the week before the Australian Open is, is really something special. Yeah, looking forward to looking forward to seeing him. Uh, who else do you think um, people will be excited to see? And I mean, given we have a lot of players on the tour, like you know, Big John Isner, obviously, you know, he lives on a serve. But we love to see the serve and volley players as well, the guys that get to the net a bit. Who else? Who are you, who are you excited to see? Um, Olga Rune, it's another uh, am amazing story. We, you know, we signed him. He was just top thirty, uh, and then went on to an unbelievable run at the end of the season. You know, four finals in a row, two titles, winning his first Masters, uh, one thousand, be beating Novak Djokovic in, in the final. So he's, I think, he's eleven in the world, but he was ten after Bercy because he um, Paris Bercy because he dropped some points. Um, he's already training. <laughs> He's now being coached uh, with uh, Patrick Moratoglu, who's very familiar with the tournament because he used to coach Serena when, when, when she won the event. Mm -hmm. um, so to be, to be able to bring him back to Auckland is really something that we're looking forward. And I won't forget, um, you know, Cam Norrie, yep. uh, you know, to bring some local flavor. Um, as people might remember, you know, Cam grew up in New Zealand. Uh, he learned the game in New Zealand and that's also a way to reward the, the, the New Zealand um, tennis uh, and, and training system, which is often criti criticized, but you know, there, there's, there's been, he's, he's the perfect example of a huge success. So 
um, you know, his family is still here. He's uh, he's he's a he's a local, so it w he was um, a really important player for us to, to to bring back to Auckland. Yeah. What about Ben McLaughlin? Where's he at at the moment? Um, I think he's still playing doubles. Yeah. Because um, he's been here before, so I wonder, yes. you know, I mean, what a what a Davis Cup team we'd have if we had Ben and Cam and Mike Venus and, and AG Rye as well. You know, it would, yeah. it would look pretty good, wouldn't it? No, no, for sure. Um, I, I'm not sure what Ben's schedule is uh, for for next year. I know his brother's still here because he's coaching at the, the Lavie Academy. Yeah, uh, but we'll, we'll be glad to have him. Yes. Yeah, it'd be great. It'd be fantastic. Uh, now it feels like from what you were talking about, the way you're spotting talent. You know, spotted a guy you thought might be nine or ten. Uh, he ends up three. You spotted a guy that might be thirty. He ends up having a good. It feels like almost playing the stock market, doing your job. To some degree, yes. Yeah. Um, you know, when, when you sign a player, you always need to think about where he's going to be in the next six months. Mm. And, and that's, that's a challenge. So um, I guess, you know, someone like Olga Runa is the perfect example. He was top 30, he, he could only go upwards. Um, so it was, it was very important to sign him at the right time. Otherwise, you know, the price might, might, might be more yeah. uh, a few months later. On the other hand, um, you know, someone like Fradu Kanu, for example, she was top 10 in July. So it was probably not the right time to have that conversation. Uh, but I knew that after the US Open, the situation might be different because it was a, a massive challenge ahead of her to defend all these points. Mm. So the timing of the discussions, um, but also the way you see the players go in the rankings in, 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 in the next few months is very critical to, to the way you build your player field. Yeah. In terms of, you know, we've talked about the men's having the wild card play in for the New Zealand players. What are you doing on the women's side? For so we, we're doing exactly the same on the women's side. Okay, yes. Cool. So there will be a playoff as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And but you like to keep a wild card or two up your sleeve because you never know what might happen. I have seen a story where Venus Williams has said, well, look, I'd love to continue to play. Is, uh, is that someone that might be on your radar if she decided that she wanted to come and have a hit here before Melbourne? Yeah. Uh, She's on the radar and she approached us. Um, the, the main decision behind uh, her coming or not to Auckland will, will depend on what the Australian Open says. Right. Um, I think she wants to play the Australian Open. She's applied for a wild card there. So depending on what the outcome is, she might, she might come back to Auckland. Yeah, well, that'll be how, how much of a draw card is that for you? I mean, I mean, I know tickets are available and tickets are selling well because you've got so many stars, but just a name like that, you know, you might be able to say to somebody on the street, Emma Raducanu, they don't know who that is, but everybody knows who Venus Williams is. Well, she's, uh, you know, one of the biggest champions of the game. Um, so, of course, if, if Venus wants to come, she, she, she's a, a, almost uh, welcome. Um, and she's not going to be there forever. So um, any opportunity to, to, to get a chance to see, uh, you know, pe people should, should take it. Yeah, definitely. And, and what's your job look like between now and the tournament starting? I mean... Are you done in terms of recruiting or are you still having conversations? No, pretty much done in terms of uh, recruiting. Um, we'll still obviously a bit of work to do on the, on the wildcard situation. Yeah. Um, there's, there's still some opportunities available and I don't want to take decisions too fast because I'm, I'm also conscious about, you know, the United Cup being played earlier on this year. Um, and I know that, you know, most players will be done the Wednesday of week one which means that they will have 10 days ahead of them before the start of the Australian Open. So depending on how they do at the United Cup, they might be looking for additional playing opportunities, um, which could work in our, in our, in our favour. Mm. So I want to keep that door open. Yeah. Uh, another player that is coming here is who's won here before, and she feels like a player that needs a bit of consistency because she's a player that is, I think, capable of a lot, but we just haven't seen enough of it. That's Sloane Stevens. Yes. I mean, Sloane's got, got a, a very good record with the, with the, the tournament here. Um, as you would remember, she, she won the US Open, so she's a Grand Slam champion. Mm. Um, her form's been on and off the, 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 the last few years. Um, I want to believe that you know, she's made some changes at the, at the end of last season um, and, and she started to, to, to get some more wins. Um, so hopefully she'll have a good preparation and, and have a, a, a very good season next year. Yeah, indeed. All right, Nicholas. Thanks very much for coming in, mate. I know you're a busy man. You've got things to do. So I appreciate your time. I appreciate you coming to see us. And uh, we look forward to, to seeing that tournament get underway uh, in the new year. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. Uh, Thank anytime, you. Anytime. Nicholas Lamprin there, the tournament director of the ASB Classic.